Hey, New Hope, Pastor Kerry here. I'm coming to you from the East Village area of downtown Des Moines where things are quiet now, but you can see the evidence of the civil unrest that's been at the forefront of the news in recent days. It just seems that over the last few months, uh, tensions have continued to mount with one thing after another attempting to disrupt life as we know it or even divide us from one another. I think it's probably a gross understatement to say that 2020 has brought a series of almost unimaginable changes, not only to our cities, but to our world. Now, many people are saying that these are unprecedented times. And while it's true that many of us have never uh, seen these kind of things in our lifetime, it's probably a bit short-sighted to say that, that we as a nation have not experienced such things before. Now, I'm not here today to comment one way or the other on current events, but I do want to remind us that we, as a nation, have endured times like these, and even worse, and with God's help, we've come through even stronger. From our founding revolution to civil war and even the latter part of the 20th century, in fact, many of you vividly remember the civil and social unrest that took place in the early to mid 60s and on into the 70s with the assassination of high profile leaders, including President Kennedy and Dr. King, and then the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, the sexual revolution and the emergence of the, the drug culture, nearly every scourge a society or the church could experience was going on almost simultaneously. In fact, there was even a flu pandemic that killed nearly 100,000 Americans between 1968 and 1970. Uh, it was a tumultuous time full of divisive issues that lingered not just for a few months or even a year or two, but for over a decade. In fact, many of those who lived during uh, those times of cultural chaos admit wondering how the country ever survived. Now, believe it or not, I'm not old enough to have remembered the turmoil of those times, but I do remember what came after. Things didn't change overnight, but in the mid 70s, God began to move in one of the most powerful, widespread and enduring times of spiritual awakening that our nation has ever experienced. The charismatic renewal had begun to sweep across denominations and that coincided with the, the Jesus People movement that saw millions of youth and young adults coming out of the hippie culture which was laced with drug use and sexual promiscuity and they were drawn to the church where they found the real peace and purpose that they were searching for. I remember many of them coming into our small town church and they looked a lot different than the typical church people. But as a kid, I just thought they were cool. And our church embraced them and built ministries around them and Christ-centered coffee houses and youth ministries sprung up all throughout the country. And the effects of those movements linger to this day in the modern Pentecostal and charismatic churches and through countless youth ministries that emerged during that time. A couple of our pastors, believe it or not, came out of that culture and a number of missionaries that our church supports, some of whom I saw personally come into the church when I was a kid. And now they've served God for a lifetime across the globe. All that to say that out of the most chaotic and divisive and seemingly irreconcilable times, God can bring spiritual awakening. He did it before and he can and will do it again. I believe in even greater measure. And while a spiritual awakening uh, will impact these streets, it may even seem to come from here in some ways, but the place where it really has to start is where revival has always uh, started. And that is in the church, not just in a facility or through a particular ministry, but in the lives of God's people. That's where real change and renewal always begins. You probably know uh, 1 Chronicles seven fourteen, where God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. You know, our land certainly needs healing in all kinds of ways, physically, spiritually, culturally, but the call for healing needs to ring loud and clear in churches through the prayers and the practice of God's people. That's our challenge in the days ahead. And just like in the 60s and 70s, the change is not gonna happen overnight. But if we are faithful to call on God and respond to Him and to others with humility and repentance and compassion and complete dependence on God, then He will respond in power. 
I'm not going to preach all that now. There'll be plenty of uh, time for that challenge to take place in the days ahead. But today, I just want to uh, leave you with the encouragement that we will get through all of this. So take heart that God has greater things in store, but also be prepared to take action, starting with prayer, asking God to search our hearts and to rid our lives of any divisive or destructive tendencies, to renew our faith in God and our compassion for the lost, and then to prepare our hearts and our ministries to receive those who God will send to us in their desperate search for peace and hope. That's what people are really looking for. And if we have it, let's open our hearts to share it. And then we will see the real change that God wants to bring in our church, in our nation, and throughout the world. He's done it before, and he will do it again. So as we anticipate that, let's continue to be at peace. Let's keep the faith. And I believe that God will begin to move very powerfully very soon.